Okay, here we go. Welcome to my channel, everybody. Today is Sunday, August 15th. I'd like to welcome everybody for stopping by my channel to check it out. Um, thank you for your support. I appreciate it. Today, I'm going to talk about a few different things. But uh, one of the things that I've noticed is there's a lot of people who are struggling with their mental health these days. And as well, people are confusing mental health and mental illness, which are two different things. So it's important to know the difference between the two. And mental health is what we can do to help, whereas mental illness needs professional help. So for myself, there's a lot of things I do to maintain mental health. I do my readings every day. I have about six readings that I do every day. I pray, I smudge, I meditate. I play my motivations every time I wake up right away in the morning as I've learned. Whatever you hear within the first 20 minutes of waking up is going to has the potential to set the tone of the spirit of your day. So you want to make sure you're taking in positive messages, things that are going to help empower you for the day. Uh, a lot of things, a thing that I've re realized lately is that people really struggle with forgiving themselves for things that we've done in the past. We're really hard on ourselves. Myself included, I've went through that many times. And it's important to let it go and forgive yourself. Write it out, pray it out, let it go so you don't have to hang on to that anymore. You have to trust the process. TTP, trust the process, talk to people, and thrive through pressure. TTP. So today I got it set up on my balcony out here. I wanted to do an outside video. I think that'd be cool. I'm trying to set it up to do live. I was all ready to go live, and then YouTube says, oh, it takes 24 hours before it's ready. It's like, all right, 24 hours it is. So I'm going through the steps, learning, evolving, adapting, developing with this business. I created my Facebook business page a week ago last Sunday, and the last time I checked, just today, it had like 306 likes. I was like, whoa, just... It's major. I'm really grateful and humbled by that. I was like expecting maybe 100 likes or something. So it just shows me that people enjoy the content that I'm creating, the things that I'm saying, and how I share my story in hopes of inspiring others to, you know, get better, get healthier, pursue your dreams, be your best. There's a quote from my mentor, Les Brown, that I really like. And he says, if you do what is easy, your life will be hard. If you complain, blame people, sleep in, just do do what the easy things are. Then your life's going to be hard, man. You're going to suffer. But if you do what is hard, you get up dressed every day, ready to take the life on. You know, you put in that work, you exercise, you discipline yourself. If you do the hard things, if you do what is hard, then your life will be easy. And I always remember that. And I was like, wow, I really, really like that. Some of you are on my Facebook. If you are, hey, you know the top, my opening saying, I am a diamond refining my mind. It's by divine design that I grind and I shine. And for me, you know, what that means is <clears throat> I'm a diamond is like diamonds are created under intense, immense pressures. Diamonds are formed under these pressures. This beauty is born and that's me. If you want to shine like a diamond, you got to be cut like a diamond. Inside, that goes inside, dealing with those hurts, those pains, those sufferings, those resentments, all that garbage you're hating on to. If you want to shine like a diamond, you got to get cut like a diamond. That, that means going to counseling. I speak to my counselor every two weeks, and I do my step work through AA and A, and these are me getting cut like a diamond so I can refine myself. And when I say divine design, you know, that's my higher power. He's aligning things for me in my life. He's making all these things come together, all these opportunities, all these blessings, all these people, this network of support and encouragers and love that I have in the community. It's just shocking to me sometimes. I've come a long way since I've moved here, and it's really a beautiful thing. I wanted to talk about rapping. See, some of you know I work for Straight Up. Straight Up, you know, we work with the people who are in the criminal street lifestyle and we try to help them to get healthy and get out of that lifestyle. We walk beside them. 
and uh there's one of the leaders there i was telling him hey man i want to make a rap song for straight up a theme song and he's like yeah that sounds cool let's do it i'll pay for the studio time i said all right and this was like a year and a half ago i'm still struggling still working on it but we're getting it done and when I was like teenager, I wanted to rap like everybody else. And I was like, okay, I want to learn how to rap. So I got my pen and my paper. And I'm, I'm trying to learn how to rap. And I admit when it first started, it was like, you know, 2001, 2002. And it was the cat and the hat and the mat. <laughs> and these silly little rhymes like that. And then I, I graduated high school. I came to U of S. And, you know, I really started putting in some more time and effort on it listening to the music i was listening to the game cd it just came out i was studying it i was counting the bars and i learned how to count music 16 bars 32 bars and i was learning how and i wrote up some good rhymes at, at, at that time then you know life happens i was arguing with my baby mama at that time and she cut off cut up my rhyme book into little pieces and smashed up my stereo Oh, that hurt me. And then I just kind of quit after that, and I just let it go. And throughout the years, I've shared some of my raps with people, and they're like, whoa, you know, there's a lot of potential there. And I've always known that there's potential there. It was just waiting for the opportune moment to really let it come out. And is there an opportune moment? I don't know, man. I think you got to make that happen. So that's what I'm trying to do. Me and a couple of other people are working on the song, getting the bars going just working out that muscle, getting that muscle back up to where it needs to be. And with that being said, I want to share this story. See, I'm from Cowboys' First Nation. Some of you may have heard of it. We are in the news a little while ago with 751 unmarked graves found out there. Well, I lived out there. I went to high school out there. And when I was out there, it was winter time this one winter. And it's right by Crooked Lake on the ice. And there's these two little boys, one was eight and one was nine. And they had went out and they're playing on the ice like early in the morning, eight o'clock. They're sliding around on the ice, having fun playing. And there was no adults around. And uh, the one part where they went by the shore, the ice was weak. And so they're sliding on that part and the ice gets weak and it starts cracking and it breaks and this little boy falls in that ice. And his other friend is freaking out, looking, oh no, oh no, he's stomping on that ice, he's trying to break that ice. His friend is banging on that ice, trying to get out. And this little boy on top of the ice doesn't know what to do, he's looking around. And he sees a tree, and he goes running to that tree. Big tree, he climbs up that tree, and there's a big branch there, and he just starts jumping on that branch. Boom, he breaks that branch, it breaks. <laughs> The little boy falls down with that branch. He grabs that branch. He drags it over to where his friend is in the ice. Boom. He just starts hitting that ice with that branch until boom, it breaks. Right when it breaks, he pulls out his friend. And his, breath, his friend took a breath of fresh air and he, and he survived. He lived. He, he saved his friend, right? He saved his friend. And afterwards, there was a crowd of people standing there. The ambulance was there, the fire truck was there, you know, the RCMP were there. And there was a crowd of people kind of standing there surveying the scene. And they're looking and they're saying, how did this little boy climb up that big tree, break that big branch, drag it back here and break that ice, save his friend? How did he do that? That's impossible. You can't do that. <laughs> and they're all thinking, bewildered, thinking, how did he do this, right? And this elder was smoking his pipe there, he's standing there. And he comes up and he says, I know how they did it. I know how he did it. I can tell you how he did it. You want to know how he did it? And everybody was like, yeah, yeah, how did he do it? How did he do it? And the elder kind of smoked it. And he looked around and he said, there was no one here to tell him that he couldn't. Hmm. Right? What could you do if you stopped telling yourself that you couldn't do it? You could do whatever you want to do in this life, whatever you're passionate about, whatever you want to pursue, whatever makes your heart come on fire. You can do that. This is why I do this. This is why I do my presentations. This is why I write, why I speak, why I rap, why I do poetry. This is what I love to do. 
find out what you love to do, nurture it, put some work on it, dreams do come true. Thank you. Prestigious Palshade. We out.